Welcome to Big Data and Hadoop course with the CAD Guild. In this session video, you are going to learn Apache Scoop. Topics covered. We will talk about and understand what is Apache Scoop, its architecture, and let us look at a few real-time hands-on examples. Scoop definition. Before we go further, it is important to know what exactly is Apache Scoop and what it is used for. Scoop stands for SQL to Hadoop. Suppose if you have a requirement to move data from the traditional relational database management system, i.e. RDBMS, to HDFS or from HDFS to RDBMS, then Scoop is the utility tool you are most likely to use. What Scoop does Now, let us see what Scoop does. It has got the excellent use case because in the migration products there is often a requirement to migrate the data from the existing RDBMS solution to the new HDFS file system. Scoop can perform both import as well as export. Import is moving data from RDBMS to the HDFS and export is the reverse process that is moving the data from HDFS to RDBMS. By HDFS means HDFS storage or it may be HBase or Hive table also. Uses of Scoop So what exactly the Scoop is used for? Scoop allows easy import and export of data from structured data stores of RDBMS such as relational databases, enterprise data warehouse, and NoSQL systems to HDFS. Using Scoop, you can provide data from external sources to HDFS and populate tables in Hive or HBase. It also integrates well with the data orchestration firm like Uzi to schedule and automate the import and export tasks and it uses the connector based architecture which supports plugins so that you can connect to any of the RDBMS like MySQL or Oracle or any other relational database management system which has got the connector support to connect to the new external systems. Scoop Architecture Now let us understand the Scoop Architecture. The architecture of Scoop looks like this. Suppose if we are moving data from a table in RDBMS, then the name of the table is orders. The very first step the Scoop does is whenever you call import, that indicates to gather the table's metadata. From the catalog table, Scoop determines what are the different columns, what are the different types of columns, and it performs multiple mapping tasks in parallel. Every map task transfers some of the data present in the RDBMS table. Scoop makes sure that no single record is transferred by two different mappers. So one record will be transferred by only one mapper, but there could be multiple mappers running in parallel. Every mapper will then produce the output in the HDFS file format inside a certain specific directory. Let us understand how the command of Scoop looks like. This is one of the Scoop command scoop import. You must give the connection string like JDBC, the type of the database, and then the IP address or a name of the machine where your RDBMS database server is running. You can also give port number if it is not running at its default port. And then you will give the name of the RDBMS database by providing the credentials to connect to the RDBMS like the username and hyphen P which means you are not typing the password. Rather, you are allowing the user to type the password at the runtime. Then you can specify which table of the RDBMS must be transferred and the target directory in the HDFS. Finally, you can specify how many mappers you want to run. If you want to run only one mapper, then you can specify one. The default number of mappers which Scoop uses is five. Let us look at the setup first and get into MySQL. First, we will create a database called DB1 and create a table called Company with columns like ID, name, and location called Company within the DB1 database. Now, insert all the three values into Company table and give all the permissions to the root user so that the root user has got at least read permission. Insert a command commit and come out of the setup.txt. Then we will run the scoop syntax in single mapper import where the target directory is scoop out. 
and this should not exist in the HDFS beforehand. The first thing you must do is to make sure your MySQL is running. The username and the password are a CAD guild, so MySQLD is running. I have connected to the ACAD Guild Sandbox using the software called Mobix Term. Now we will go inside MySQL as a root user and we will print all the copied syntaxes. Now type exit and come out of the command window or optionally you may also want to be inside the MySQL. Let's go inside the MySQL tab again and use the database DB1. If you want to see the entries of the table then type select star from company. We will see the entries out here. As discussed we will now run this scoop job using the scoop syntax in single mapper import. Once you run the scoop syntax in the command, it will ask you for the password, as you have mentioned, hyphen P. The password value is not specified, and hence the password remains blank, and just press enter to run the map reduce job. Thus, the map reduce job will get started, and the output will be on your screen. Suppose if you are using the ACAD Guild sandbox, you may receive a message like import failed. Kindly ignore this message at the last line as this is because of the absence of a jar file. But before that, you would see a message that job as completed successfully. Let us check whether it is completed successfully or not. Let's go to the Hadoop fs-ls and scoop out. This is the directory where we are loading our files. Inside this directory you will observe a recent file that is created and read the file content. By default in the Hadoop file system this file will contain comma delimited fields i.e. all these three records will be present here in the comma separated fields. Now let us talk about the data transfer from Hadoop to RDBMS scoop export. Let us delete the entire column from the company and commit it. Now if you would like to see any entries then run command select star from the company. You won't find anything. In the scoop export it's a reverse process and you must perform the scoop export by giving the connection URL, the credentials, and the table which you want to load in the RDBMS. Give the export dir which is a directory in the HDFS that is scoop out which contains the data with which you want to load into the RDBMS. Specify what is the delimiter, whether it is a comma. Specify the number of mappers and optionally you can specify the columns you want to load in the RDBMS. We are using a backslash in every line of the code all the time. It's a unique standard. If your single line command goes across multiple lines for readability, then use a backslash to indicate that the command is not completed and will continue to the next line. By running this scoop command, even though the data got deleted from the RDBMS, it will be stored in the HDFS. The password field must be blank for the ACAD Guild sandbox, as we are using a blank password. Just press enter whenever you are asked for the password to run and complete the job successfully. Kindly ignore the error message for a CAD Guild sandbox if you have received at the end. You can see that the map reduce job is started. Essentially, it is a map only job. Only mappers are involved and reducers are not. So kindly ignore the message at the end. Do you remember in the last instance the table was empty in the RDBMS? But now run the command select star and you will see the data back there in the table. And this is called as Hadoop export. Now you can be able to perform export and import 
as this is a very easy to work with scoop. Whenever there is a migration of data involved across RDBMS and HDFS, it makes the way easy. In this session, you have learned the following key concepts such as what is scoop, when it is used, architecture of scoop. We also took some real-time hands-on examples to demonstrate use cases. I hope this session video will give you some idea about scoop introduction. Thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more videos.